Hello, everyone, and welcome. You are listening to Weddings Done Right Radio, the how-to for the I do. This radio show podcast came about because there's so much information out in the world about weddings and planning weddings, and really not too many alternatives to get some good, solid advice from the experts in the industry. I am your host, Jody Harris, CEO of Fun at Sight and Sound Events, where I am broadcasting from the wedding capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, Nevada, it doesn't matter, potato, patata, and Las and Sight and Sound Events World Headquarters. So who is Jody Harris? I own Sight and Sound Events with my husband, Pat. I've been in the wedding industry since the early 90s. I am an event a, pro- a producer, director, coordinator, a disc jockey, MC, and, and I am a national NACE, National Association for Catering and Events, professional member of the year award winner. Take that. During my career, I have successfully produced so many weddings and I continue to produce them to this day. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for your support, boys and girls. What you can do is you can write a review and you su- you can subscribe to our show on iTunes. Also, tell all your friends and fellow wedding professionals about Weddings Done Right Radio, the how-to for the I do. And I really appreciate all the Twitter messages I got from the last show. Thank you guys so much for the Twitter love. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Jody Harris, and that's spelled J O D I H A R R I S. So I am super excited. So today's show, oh my gosh, I am really, really honored and excited to have sitting in world headquarters Lisa Hopkins, everybody. Um, You know, you can't have a wedding without a venue. So Lisa Hopkins is a CPCE, Certified Professional Catering Executive and and President of the National Association for Catering and Events, NACE. NACE is the oldest and largest professional catering and event association in the world with over 4,000 members. Lisa is also the Director of Catering and Conference Services at the Houstonian Hotel located in Houston, Texas. Yeehaw! In March, Lisa celebrated, get this, and she looks so young, really. I don't know how she did this. 15 years of service. 15 years yesterday, Jody. Oh my gosh, Lisa, welcome to Weddings Done Right. Welcome to World Headquarters. Thanks, it's great to be here. I'm excited to be a part of your radio show and and to talk about the how-to for the I do. I love it. I love the name of it. It's great. That is so cool. Well, it's such an honor to have you here. So, you know, I talked a little bit about your bio. Is there anything else you'd want to tell you know, people, you know, out there? I mean, how did you get started in the, in the catering? I mean, 15 years, that's a long time. I've been at the hotel for 15 years yesterday, as of yesterday, like you said, and I, I've been in catering for about 22 years. Wow. I came right out of college into the hotel industry, worked through front office, wanted to be in the sales department, wanted to do the suit and tie thing, what I thought would be five days a week, not so much really. No. But long story <laughs> short, the first opportunity that I had at the time, I was working at the original McCormick Center Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. Oh. First opportunity that came up was for a catering manager job. Now, I didn't know much about catering. I barely knew that we had ballroom space in that hotel, except for that I would direct people up there on a Saturday night for a wedding or a special event. And uh, my first interview question was, why do you think you'd be a good catering manager, Lisa? And I said, well, I like to eat. I like to drink. Why not? And the rest, they say, is history. But it's it's a great field. I can't imagine doing anything else. Wow, good for in you in the con- business now. Con- congratulations, Thanks. that is awesome to to do that. So yeah. so you know what? I'm ready to dive into the subject. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. Let's talk about weddings. Let's talk about weddings. You know, last week on my or not last last show, I had Deborah Hansen, producer of Bridal Spectacular. So we talked about how the girls have the ring. And Mm -hmm. what they need to do next. Yes. So you can't have a wedding. I don't know how many people have seen Bride Wars, but you can't have a wedding without (laughs) a venue, right? That's one of the first things people choose. One of the first things that you want to put down. you got to get the venue and the date it's it's one of the first steps. So. And it's and it's probably Definitely. you'll spend more money on the wedding reception, food and drinks than anything else at your wedding. So yes. it's important that you worked with that you work with an experienced professional catering executive mm-hmm. who specializes in weddings. Yes. And in 
in the field of catering, there are people who have specialties, certainly. Um, you know, the wedding industry has become its own, and a lot of venues have people that they designate for that market in particular because of all of the things that go into the planning process. So should your, should your caterer be certified as like a CPCE? And you can explain what CPCE is for our, our listeners. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, CPCE stands for Certified Professional Catering Executive. And anyone who has that designation has years of experience in the industry as well as a body of knowledge that they possess about the fundamentals of catering, beverage, food production, everything that you'd want a catering person to know about. So those, that designation means that you have somebody who has the combined experience and knowledge really to problem solve. They have, they have just a great base for you to, to plan from. They are experts in their field in every way. So, so very important. And, mm -hmm. and how does one get that um, designation? Well, your designation comes from, you have to qualify based on your years of experience. Through NACE. Through NACE, Through yes. NACE. You okay. apply, and then your uh, application is either accepted or rejected, and then you study for the test. The test is 175 questions, um, and it's in a, it's all-encompassing about the fundamentals of catering. Wow. So right there, that is a great start for, for our brides out mm -hmm. there, is to work with somebody who is, who's got a designation. That's super important. Absolutely. And I wouldn't hesitate as a bride to ask someone, how, many, how long have you been in this business? Absolutely. How, how many weddings do you, have you done? Um, how many weddings does your venue do? Mm -hmm. um, what are you guys known for? You know, all of those things are really important when you're looking for a place that can really deliver uh, your dream, your dream wedding. And how does one find a facility? What, what, what's the steps? I mean, do they go through magazines? Are they meeting you at bridal shows? Like, how do these girls find the facilities? Oh, all of the above. And I think a lot of brides today are shopping on the internet. Really? We are getting a lot of requests online just in my own venue. And, you know, that's, you know, today's bride is, is probably a working young woman who, you know, over her lunch break is probably letting her fingers do the walking across the internet and looking at places. So, you know, it's really important um, to have your best foot forward, obviously, when you're doing a website. But obviously, you know, as a bride, you want to take a look at the website, the quality of, a, of what they're showing you. Photographs are everything. And, and so you're looking for photographs that are going to really tell a story about, you know, what kind of weddings these, these places do. Awesome. And should they just, like... I'm hearing like you always should make an appointment if you if you really want to tour a facility. I think it's important that you actually set up an appointment oh, yes. with the catering manager, director. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important rather than just like, oh, I'm in the neighborhood. There's the Eustonian Hotel or here's the Bellagio. I'm just going to walk in. Why should they make that appointment and meet with a catering person? As a bride, you probably have a myriad of questions. You probably got a list of things you know, your, your head is spinning, you've got these visions, you've got these ideas that you've garnered from looking at social media, from looking at magazines, from looking at all of these publications and all this information out there. So if you really want some quality time, some very focused time with a catering person in a hotel or a club or whatever venue it is, absolutely make an appointment. Because if you walk in, you don't quite know what you're walking into. Somebody may not be available. And I think you want the best information that you can. And those are the folks that are going to have all of the questions that all the answers to the questions that you're going to have. One of the big questions that I get in my line of work from my clients a lot of times is they'll say to me, can I come and see you in action? Mm -hmm. Do you guys get that too? We do. And, we and do. how do we people tell love these people to, not to... <laughs> well, we always advise people, why don't you come a little bit before the party? Because a lot of times from a venue perspective, a lot of brides would love to see how that room sets up, what that room looks like with all the tables and chairs, you know. In a hotel or any other venue for that matter, you might not have the exact kind of event when they're there that they can see. And, you know, the visual is everything. So... You know, you don't want to crash somebody's party. And, uh, and absolutely. Kind of, yeah. Absolutely. I kind of tell I them, you know, I, you don't, you wouldn't want strangers walking into your wedding, so I really can't allow you to walk into somebody else's wedding. But what I'd like for you to do is come, you know, the wedding starts at 7. Why don't you come in at like 
six, you know, an hour and a half before, an hour before, and then you could kind of see the space and see what see what's going on. Absolutely. I, I agree. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, um, I, I one time discouraged a couple from going in and I, seeing yeah. us, you know, at the event, but they didn't listen to me and they went in mm, and, yeah. you know, the catering manager threw a fit, like, how dare you bring these people in? And I said, I didn't, yeah. you know, they just came in. What do you, what do you do? Yeah. You, you know, would, you just really insist that people be as respectful of other people's parties as you would want them to be of their own. But yeah, it's really difficult, you know, and that's where, um, you know, getting references, getting testimonials Mm -hmm. on anybody that you're shopping is really key. Um, At my hotel, I know my social catering people who handle the wedding market have just a ton of letters talking about the great job that they've done. So, and we have references galore from people. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to get a visual of that, but you really can't crash somebody else's party. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah. you hear that, girls? You cannot come <laughs> Don't and see. crash the party. Exactly. You can't go see your DJ in action. Oh, where are you performing this Saturday? Or crash a wedding at a hotel that you're interested in. Because another thing I find too, Lisa, is that that event or that venue, if they don't make the appointment with you, it's set up for another couple Mm -hmm. so maybe the cup that other couple are are, they're into organic food right or they're into something a little bit weird you're walking in you don't know what you're walking into yeah so the disclaimer has to be you know this is not every, every wedding is unique nowadays that's absolutely true every every couple has their own dream of how the event's going to be they have their own idea of what is going to be the best hospitality for their guests so when you walk into somebody else's wedding, don't play judge and jury. Absolutely. Just to see, you know, to see the space, kind of see the space, how it lays out and get a feel for it. I agree. But and don't ha- use that. Don't use what that couple's doing to determine what the venue can do. Because Ex- a venue could do anything. It's a bl- isn't it a blank canvas? Absolutely. It's a blank canvas. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. How soon in advance should a bride book her wedding facility? How, how soon? As soon as you can. I would say, you know, we are getting calls right now, just in general, it's interesting because the time frame often changes. We used to work about six to nine months out, which is pretty short term, actually, when you think about it. Now it's like nine months to a year, and we're even working 15 months out now at times. So, you know, as soon as you want, if you're looking for a peak time, and then that's going to, of course, vary geographically. In, in Houston, where I'm from, peak time is year round. Wow, because of the weather. our weather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. People wouldn't hesitate to book a January or a February meeting, whereas in a place like Chicago or Minneapolis, probably not because the weather is somewhat restrictive. I talked to so many of my friends who are East Coast mm-hmm. event professionals, and that's exactly they're like they're they all go to like the Bahamas. I'm like, the Bahamas? Right. What's that about? I wish I could go to the Bahamas in January. Yeah. They're going on cruises and Bahamas and all this. And I'm like, and in my market as well, it's year round is mm-hmm. with big emphasis in Vegas on like April, May, September, October. Mm-hmm. So you're right. It just yeah. varies on, you know, where you live, where in the country you live, because God forbid you pick a city where, you know, you might get a blizzard or something like that. You yes. just Yeah. So you're gonna know you know, and if you don't know, where do you find that information? I think that's a really good question for this audience. Is Absolutely. If you're not sure of what the peak times are, you know, a lot, of, a lot of brides have friends and family that have gotten married, perhaps. So they're, so they're benchmarking what, those, what their friends and their family have done. But if you don't know, you know, that's one of the reasons why bridal shows are so interesting and so informative, is you can really get a feel for what the market is like in your city, and then you can make the best decision for yourself. Absolutely. One of the things that I've noticed too, and this is a really good tip because I get calls from brides wanting to know what the weather is going to be like. Mm -hmm. I always tell them to go online, go to an Mm -hmm. almanac and Mm -hmm. research the weather on the particular time that they want to get married or the particular day and year, and maybe reference back three years Mm -hmm. and see what that weather was like. That's it's a, a good that's idea. a great tip. I yes. mean, and it's so accessible to us now with the internet. Oh yeah. Yeah, the research is really there at your fingertips. You can find anything that you need, which is nice because it makes getting that information and decision making goes a, a lot faster these days mm-hmm. because all that information is so readily available. What do you bring when you meet 
uh, you meet your caterer. What 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 do people usually bring with them when they sit down and when they, when they meet with you? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we see we see everything. I'll tell you, it just it really depends on what's important to the bride. But I would say, if there's one thing you should bring. Bring your priorities. <laughs> okay. What are the things that are the most important to you? And and then there's also the who question. Who should come? You know, don't don't bring an army. Don't bring your bridesmaids. Don't bring an army of people. Bring the people that you value their opinion. I think is important. Like you can you can bounce things off of them, and they're not. Um, they're, they know it's your day. They know it's going to be your wedding, and they're not going to try to influence you one way or the other. So bring only those people that can do that. And the person that maybe is signing the check? Well, sure. <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's important to them that they be a part of that, sure. Do, yeah. do the fiancés come a lot? Like, do you mostly see couples? Are they guy? You know, are they the the couples that come, or do they we, always yeah. bring the parents? We usually see a bride and a mother of the bride. Every so often, it's a father, but it's usually the mom. Uh, the mother of the bride and the bride. And the fiancé, I would say, maybe 60% of the time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, and it varies again. And then, you know, parents of the groom, it just kind of depends on what their choice is to be active. How how much participation do they want to do? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it depends on how the bride feels about the groom's family in some cases. And the groom's family, how they feel about the bride, you know, are they are they very close before all of this happens, and then so they want to be a part of that. Either it, it kind of naturally happens or not. Do they take their cameras and video cameras with them? Some and, people do. Mm-hmm. What's the wildest thing somebody's ever brought to, to, as, <laughs> to I remember, inspect a site? I remember one time someone brought, and it was really bizarre to me, a tape measure. And um, <laughs> they, were, they were measuring things. In the room, they were measuring our, our chairs and our tables, and I, I thought that was so strange. It was because they had apparently been to an event where someone had really large um, tables that they didn't like. They didn't like the big, big table, yeah. and they also didn't like um, the comfort of the chair. I couldn't remember what, you know, I, I, I was not working with this bride and groom. It was, it was someone that my managers were working from, Isn't but I saw, I walked into the room incidentally yeah. and I saw them measuring and I was like, what are they measuring? That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. So, you know, you don't, and that's really the role of a cater, a very, very good catering manager will ask the question, what's the most important thing to you? Mm-hmm. What is the most important thing to you? And so as a bride, you can really um, do yourself a huge favor by kind of figuring that out beforehand. You know, what's the most important thing? Is it the beautiful ballroom with the chandelier? Because if it is, I'm not going to show you the room that doesn't have one. Yeah, because how do you know which of your ballrooms right. to show them? I mean, right. if you're or any hotel. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. You need to know in your head mm-hmm. what your vision is. Right. For example, my hotel is probably a little different, but we have four different rooms, depending on the size of, the, of what the wedding reception is going to be, that are all unique and different in their own way. They all have... Sp- pros and cons. So when we're qualifying business, when we're trying to figure out which room we're going to show, we ask those questions. Do you want a big formal room? Are you looking for a more casual room? We have a room with a patio. Is that a factor? Is that important? So, you know, it's really about what's most important to you. Are you seeing a lot of people using Pinterest these Mm -hmm. days? Oh, yeah. Wow. They're bringing their dream boards, I guess, with them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. People are in f- photography is critical for for planning. It's the visual that everybody has, you know. So any any professionals that are out there that are in this market, you got to have Pinterest. You got to be putting what you're doing out there visually for people, and people follow it like crazy. And you and and photographers can submit their images to you, of course. Mm-hmm. Are you cool with a photographer who wants to put their? I know now I'm kind of going off topic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Are it's you okay. cool with a photographer who wants to put their their logo on like an image of your ballroom? Sure, as it's long cool. as the picture is a good picture. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and then we will ask the same of the photographers. Like when we have our 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 web page, we ask photographers, "Can we use this shot of our room?" Giving you the, of course, the credit. That's great. So yeah, I mean that's a, that's a real partnership. And you know, I would talk about, you know, those relationships with vendors, and NACE. That is all a whole topic there. That really good venues and and good managers in good venues have an extraordinary amount of relationships outside with other vendors. 
and they get those through NACE, I would say. Right. Our organization really advocates partnerships, building great business relationships, those things. And helping so, each other out. and just, Absolutely. That's, that's great. Um, so, so you're seeing the brides coming in with, with like magazine. They, mm-hmm. is that a good, is that a good thing? I mean, in order to get to their vision, is that a good thing to rip out an, something sure. out of a magazine or bring my, um, my uh, iPad with mm-hmm. me to have a meeting and say, hi, Lisa, you know, here are my colors. Mm-hmm. This is what I dreamed. It really helps you oh, narrow yeah. things down. Hear that, girl? So put it on a Pinterest board. Yeah, and it's not so much maybe decor as to if something would fit in the room. Okay. That's that's certainly part of it. But with food, you know, there's food photography. So, you know, I don't expect a bride to walk in and know exactly what they want want me to serve. Mm -hmm. That that would be unrealistic. They are not a chef, but they know what they like. And so it's my, my job is really to take what they have told me they like and build that into a menu that makes sense that will work for, for whatever occasion they're trying to do, either a sit-down dinner or a reception or whatever that is. So how do they know if they want a sit-down dinner or a buffet? Is that something that the catering man, an experienced catering manager, when talking to mm-hmm. their client, would would recommend? Absolutely. It all goes down to the feel of the party, I think, is the most important thing. Do you want it to be a very... Um, Formal atmosphere, if it's going to be, if that's kind of what you picture, where it's really a dining experience, then that's a seated dinner to me. If someone says, I really want people to have a nice served, they feel taken care of. When I hear buzzwords like that, that means that somebody really wants service and it's a seated meal. Or if someone says, I want something really fun, I want something interactive, I want people to be able to come and go as they want, eat when they want, stop when they want, then that's a, that's a, what I would call a reception style. Is reception style mm-hmm. another word for buffet? It kind of is. Or yeah. stations? Yeah, is those it... lines are getting kind of blurred, but a traditional dinner buffet is really probably right now what we're seeing the least of, where it's a long line of food and you know, you're having your salads and your meats and your entrees and bread at the end. It's really about stations now and interactive stations. Maybe there's a chef behind there. Maybe it's a display. Very maybe, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So the whole idea of a reception is that people can come and go and that there's interesting things going on at each table. Yeah, because my biggest thing is, you know, when I'm directing a wedding reception and I'll talk, they'll, I'll say, what's your dinner? They'll say, I'll say, oh, it's a buffet. No, it's not a buffet. It's stations. Yes. And I get there and it kind of reminds me of a buffet, uh-huh. but... Not but really. it's set up differently. Yeah, it's set up w- differently because, like you said, you have things spread out throughout right. the entire room. Where at a buffet, you're right. You start with a salad, mm-hmm. then you work your way to the rice or the pasta, and then yeah, yeah. And it's usually one or two lines max. But with the reception and and the station concept, you could have four or five different stations. That's nice. Depending on how many people you have, you would double those or triple those based on the number of people. So that's more in now the stations. Oh, yeah. As opposed to the mm-hmm. old school buffet. I, I love it. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. What should be included in a package? When when you're selling a package, what's included in a package? Well, packages for the wedding market are usually inclusive of the menu, and then you might have several options within the menu. Um, you could have a cake included in that, and we can talk a little more about wedding cakes if you want. But, for example, our package at the Houstonian we include a wedding cake that we contract out from outside the building. Okay. We have a fabulous pastry kitchen, but we really don't have the infrastructure to do wedding cakes. So we have a great resource outside our, our hotel that um, our packages all include a cake from her. And then she her company does the cakes, and the bride and groom will go consult with them separately. Interesting. And if somebody has, like, an aunt or wants to bring in like an award winning, not that your, your, mm-hmm. your chef is an award winning, but you know what I'm saying? Yes. To some people, maybe the cake is the most important thing. I'll mm-hmm. never forget, never forget this story. I did a wedding at the Ritz Carlton Hotel here in Lake Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I never in my entire life seen a $10,000 wedding cake. I haven't either. I would love to see that. This couple had a $10,000 wow. wedding cake. I didn't believe it. I honestly did not believe that this cake was $10,000 until my banquet captain came over to me and showed me the BEO, Banquet Event Order Girls. Yes. Know the terms, Banquet Event Order. BEO. Showed me the BEO. Uh-huh. And sure enough, 10000 
$8,000 wedding cake. So I said, and, and you know what's the funniest thing, Lisa? It was made of like cardboard. Only one layer was actually uh, a cake. Okay. So and then in the back, a, oh, okay. they had the sheet cake of the, the re, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, so at the end of the night, I don't know, maybe $5,000 worth of cake was left over because yeah. not everybody ate cake. I can't even imagine. I even tried to, to as the MC, tried to tell people that this is an amazing cake. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to say it was a $10,000 cake. Right. Maybe I should have because more people would have ate it. Maybe so. You know? But I said, you know, you've got to try it. It's absolutely delicious. The mm-hmm. chef, you know, who prepared this. So when we were leaving at the end of the night, I said to the, the banquet captain, I'm like, I are you what are you going to do with the cake and he goes well it's done and I'm like can I try a piece of cake I've never had $10,000 yeah, wedding cake I'd like cake. to try that piece too <laughs> Lisa it was so good wow. it was what amazing what was so great about it it just tasted amazing it was the uh, it melted in my mouth and maybe because I knew it was $10,000 yeah. could be you could know be. I mean I don't know if any cake is worth 10 grand wow. I'm sorry I hope I'm not insulting anybody yeah. but that is a lot of money That's of, a lot your of, money budget, of your budget of your budget to spend, you know, on a wedding cake, but it was absolutely delicious. It really mm-hmm. was. And um, so if, if, a, if a bride had something like that, I mean, something really special, something really special yeah. in the cake industry Do a lot. I know you can only speak for Eustonian, mm-hmm. but being president of NACE, you probably hear other mm-hmm. people talk about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, do they take that out of the package? Is I mean, well, our our pack, our, the cake that's included in our package is a basic cake. And then any upgrades, the bride settles that directly with that vendor. Okay. So we certainly can accommodate that flexibility. And, so and flexibility. So I want some amazing cake and I want fondant and I want, you know, just all this amazing stuff. Then, yeah, then they would handle that separately. But part of our package is that cake. Now, that's pretty unusual. Some other things that people include in packages would be things like chair covers, Mm-hmm. which is a big thing. I know one of my competitor hotels includes a chair cover, which is nice because it, it kind of helps you with the, your decor budget, gets you, you know, the thing you need to make that ballroom look really beautiful. But maybe they have stock linen. They could, yeah. And so there might be, you know, an additional upgrade for a certain color Got or it. a certain style. Uh-huh. So, and then the other thing that is nice in a, in a wedding package is a bar package because beverage is a pretty costly item. And I know everybody thinks that nobody drinks a lot. None of their friends, none of their family drink a lot. But the truth is when people are drinking on somebody else's nickel, they tend to drink half the glass of wine. They put it aside. They go get another one. Mm -hmm. It's a much different type of consumption than it is than a cash bar. So people will indulge. Now, that doesn't mean people consume, but they will take from the bar. And, you know, so you have to be prepared for that. And if you can get some sort of locked in pricing p- through bar packaging, it's always a good idea. I'm seeing a lot of um, also like the first two hours are hosted mm-hmm. at places and then the last two hours go to cash bar. I've seen a lot of beer, wine, soda mm-hmm. things yes. happening. So. Mm-hmm. Is there is there any particular you know recommendation that you could make to our brides out there? I mean, just do your homework and just research, I guess. I think so, and and you kind of know you know from your guest list, you kind of know where people gravitate to. But one thing I would say, if if I was going to give somebody some advice about not getting crazy with what their beverage is, it's very nice to do beer and wine, and make sure you have a nice wine that complements the meal. Okay, because I think, you know, food and wine go together very naturally. And so you want to make sure that your wine choices and your food kind of complement each other. And then it's be, then it would be okay to add like a fun specialty cocktail. I was just going to ask you about yeah. the specialty cocktail. Very Could trendy. you explain to the yeah. audience what a specialty cocktail is? You know, it, usually it's a vodka-based drink because vodka is the most popular one. But it can be really customized. It's It's really about a color. It's about a flavor. A lot of brides and grooms will pick their favorite drink, whatever that is. You know, maybe they met and they were drinking, you know, vodka and grapefruit juice. And so they want to, you know, do that and doll that up a bit. And that's what they want to pass at the beginning. 
So you can you offer that drink throughout the evening, and that's perfectly fine. I like the specialty yeah. cocktail. I think it's really cool. It's personal branding. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're branding that wedding. You know, you can call it. You know how you had the benefer, and mm-hmm. you know you can combine your name yes. together, and yes. that would be cool. And there is a ton of resources out on the internet. I have tons of books about specialty cocktails in my office. That's great. We do one for pretty much every wedding. That's kind of a standard. That is fun. Yeah. I, I, if I was doing my wedding again, I would totally do the specialty yeah. and we would do the the peyote i guess there we go absolutely <laughs> oh that's something a little different that sounds good but it, you know it's fun it can be color oriented it can be flavor it. oriented it can match the season and yeah. it's very simple to add mm-hmm. on right it's just very and it doesn't simple. cost a lot more good it doesn't cost a lot more it doesn't really doesn't cost any more in the in the big scheme of what you're going to pay for your bar bill what's what's going on with champagne toasts these days you know, they come and go. What I'm seeing now with champagne is people are doing, and it kind of, again, goes back to that cocktails. People are doing champagne cocktails. They're adding another liqueur of sorts, um, or liquor or another liqueur, and then they add something color-wise to make it their own drink. Yeah. And you don't have to do a champagne toast to have a toast in your party. Right. You know, that's traditionally champagne's been toast, used it for toasting for a long, long time, but you don't have to. I'm seeing, again, speaking, you know, this is an area that I know a lot mm-hmm. more about than the, the, you know, than the other topic when we talked about bridal shows, you know, I just, I used to go to the bridal shows, but, right. but this, I, I'm, I'm around this every weekend. And mm-hmm. what I'm seeing like you more and more is that when I ask my clients in our design sessions, whether or not they're going to, you know, there's going to be a toast, will there be a champagne? No, it's glass. Glass in hand. I'm mm-hmm. seeing a lot of glass in yeah. hand, and that's a great way to save some money too. Absolutely, because you know, if you're if you do a champagne toast, then the hotel is going to pour off a lot of champagne into glasses, walk around with it, and if your crowd is not a champagne crowd, if they've already got something in their hand from the cocktail hour, then they're not going to pick it up. And I don't and think they're you gonna, bought that. And I don't think they they really care. Mm-hmm. No. I really, I, you know, I've never been to a wedding where I've seen a guest say to me, "What." No champagne for yeah. the toast. Like no one's ever said that. They're yeah. just happy. They'll raise their glass to water. You know, their their glass with water Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. Yeah, and you should. When we say beer and wine, have champagne be a part of that on the bar, and and then you could if you if champagne's just something fun that you want to to work on, then then make that your cocktail. Make a champagne cocktail. So here's a question for you. Is it ever too early to serve alcohol to my guests? <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere, <laughs> exactly. isn't it? Exactly. You know, I uh, went to a wedding um, very early on. One of my first college friends to get married, she got married. The ceremony was at 1030. We were at the reception by 1130 and we were drinking at 1131. I mean, yeah, no, not yeah. really. You know, again, you want to make it appropriate to the time of day. I don't think you need a full open bar for an early um, for a for an afternoon wedding. Yeah. So no, okay. It's never too early. Never too early. And you know, mimosas work beautifully. Bloody Love Marys, mimosas. Everybody, that kind of thing in the morning. Yeah. Fantastic. Everybody seems to think that mimosa is a Sunday drink. I don't know absolutely. what it is. No, I, it's, I, it's a special occasion drink. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't, you know, you can do mimosa, but you can also do something different. Take a different juice. Take a pineapple juice. Take a guava juice. Take cranberry. You know, it doesn't have to just be orange juice. You don't have to do a mimosa. I did a um, a pomegranate one one time for Christmas with a little pomegranate, little orange juice, a little champagne. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. What about the tasting? What did, Can you explain to the mm-hmm. audience what a tasting is and should a tasting be included in your package? Yes. And in most venues, I think that once you've signed your contract that you do get a tasting. And that's really a time where... You're trying out everything on your menu to sh- make sure that that's exactly what you want. And it's a time for your catering manager also for you and the catering manager to sit down and detail what we call a detailed appointment. It's where you go through everything that you need to go through, the setup, the timing, the bar arrangements, all of those things. Do vendors normally show up at tastings? I've been seeing, I've been hearing a little bit about sometimes. Sometimes decor people do. Okay. Yeah. And I would say when you're really doing something intricate for a seated dinner and you're going to have a lot on that tabletop, charger plate, special glassware, anything like that, then it is a good idea to make sure that the food that you're going to 
plan to serve makes sense with what your tabletop is going to look like. And I guess you're right. You know, you are right. Because I'm thinking, you know, at the tasting, if you're a person who's decorating your table, if they can do a mock setup mm-hmm. for you, you'd be able to see how crowded that oh, table. Because yes. when you're the bride and groom, you're just focused. You're so nervous. Mm-hmm. You're just focused on, oh, my gosh, you know, Everything. we just got married. You know, to see the table in a non-stressful environment and just look at it and go, you know what? Maybe we have too many things mm-hmm. on here. Mm-hmm. That's like, really like good. Like the party favor, for example. Yeah. Something as simple as that, if you don't think through where that's going to live or how that's going to get into the hand of your guest, then it could, it, you know, it could get missed or it could be just overlooked on the table or it doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's close to something else mm-hmm. that it shouldn't be close to. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of decor um, vendors will come in during tastings when we have a very intricate tabletop and a very intricate menu just to make sense, just to check that everything is making sense that is going on at the table. Do you see a lot of party favors? You Mm -hmm. brought up party favors. What, like what, what's a party favor? Like just a a thank you gift for coming to our wedding. It's a little memory that people take home with them. And something that I think is coming into trend, which of course I embrace because I'm a foodie Mm -hmm. is the food favor. The food favor. I love it. What's a food favor? Well, it could be uh, something sweet it could be like a little box of Parisian macaroons, for example. Macaroons are big. It's, yeah, something, you know, it could be um, a warm cookie r- coming right out of the oven with a glass of, uh, with a with a um, pint of milk I've on seen, the way home. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. Donuts. I, I think yes. I've read somebody where like, people had a donut station mm-hmm. on their way out of the, out of the reception yes. facility. For a wedding one time, I did a bombolini, which is like a donut ball that's filled with raspberry Ooh. jelly, kind of a, um, it was, a, I'm trying to think if it was, I believe it was a Jewish wedding because that's a kind of a Hanukkah item. And it was close to the holidays, which was close to the Hanukkah season for them. So yeah, bombolinis and milk. And pe- coffee station, yeah. And people aren't expecting that, so no, it's really it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. mean, that's I don't see too many of that, too no. much of it here. Yeah, it's usually a sweet thing, and I love the food idea because when you go to a party, if you get a favor that's like just a, a little something that's never going to go away, what do you do with it? It's just another little thing. What I are you talking about? You're talking about my salad tongs? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> my yeah. 20-year-old salad tongs. Exactly. <laughs> You're right, Whereas though. Whereas if it's a food item, people can enjoy it. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of like they get to take the party home with them, and then they get to enjoy the party one more time. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about who usually will work on the day of the wedding. Is the catering manager the person that runs the event? Is it the banquet captain? Well, the catering manager should be there, and and in uh, I can tell you in the case of my hotel is there, unless they have something major in their life going on. But then we have somebody filling in for them. So there's always a catering representative. Then this is kind of the team that you walk into that day. Then you have a banquet captain, and the banquet captain's role is to oversee the event, to execute the event on site. So the banquet captain is in charge of making sure the room is set up right, the tabletop is set up right. The servers um, are there. Their tables are assigned. They're, they have a clear idea of what the party is going to do so that they know what their service style is going to be that day. So the banquet captain really runs the show. And then whoever is the representative from the wedding side, so it's the family, it's the wedding planner, whoever that is. See, did and they all work as a team. Absolutely. And, and the wedding planners... I think they're absolutely fantastic Mm -hmm. to have at a wedding reception because it allows your um, banquet captain to have that one point of contact working with the planner. Mm -hmm. The bride can actually work with the planner one-on-one. I think it's a great thing. I mean, do you, and I'm hearing stories that there are like hotels across the country, maybe in the world that really kind of frown upon wedding planners. Oh, we love wedding planners at our hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why is because that's a person who the banquet captain and the catering manager, as the evening progresses, can go to to get updates, to get changes, to get things happening. So, yeah, you know, the wedding planning industry in and of itself is not that old. It's a fairly new thing. And wedding planners come from all different um, segments of the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And what's interesting about that is sometimes a wedding planner 
plans their own wedding and then suddenly decides they want to be a wedding planner. It was so much fun. And I did such a great job. And <laughs> I mean, we're laughing about that, but I, I know a lot of people who have started that way. I do. I do too. And I think it's great that they bring their passion to it. And if they, if they really have a love of doing it, then that's great. But they need to make sure they're well-versed in, in what's going on in the wedding market. Well-versed, you know, when we talked earlier about how much money you spend, the, the expenditure on a wedding is huge. And about 50% of that is your food and beverage. 40 yes. to 50% is kind of the national average. So, you know, you want somebody who knows something about food, something about how to put things together. You want someone who has great relationships with vendors. Again, NACE is the place where they do that. NACE is the place where the, de- where the relationships are developed. And so you want somebody who knows what they're doing. And the education. Yes. You know, again, you, we talk, you, you mentioned the girl who was the bride who now decided to become mm-hmm. a wedding planner. But, you know, even, even for somebody like me who started as a disc jockey entertainer, I have learned so much being an active member of NACE, mm-hmm. not only here in Vegas, but going to national industry events, um, conventions, right. conferences, where you meet other professionals and sit in seminars that are related to food. You don't really, you don't realize how important the food is. And mm-hmm. you are a hundred percent right. 40 right. to 50%. I'm surprised it's not even more of your budget goes to, you know, your, your food and beverage. Absolutely. And it's critical and it's critical and it's critical to find good vendors that understand that concept too. Yes. And who can work together really well. It's, it's, ex- and who ex- understand that everybody, it's a team effort. There's not one person who's more important that everybody has to, everybody has a a commitment that they've made to the couple and a product that they have to deliver. So you can't, no one can go short on that. Mm -hmm. The, the The decor, it has to be as promised. And so the hotel can't say, no, 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 you can't do that. You know, you can't do that at that point of the day of the wedding. Those right. things have to be understood. And again, our organization, NACE, is a place where people understand because we're the place where those dialogues can happen. Those conversations can happen about what works, what doesn't work. Absolutely. All of those things happen there. I agree. I agree. NACE is the place. I like it is that. The place. I think that's the new slogan. NACE is the place. Yeah. And going back to event planners for a second, yes. you know, that is an emerging field. That is, um, we have a lot of event planners that are NACE members. We do. And that is where they develop their list of vendors that they can recommend. Those are people that they know, people that they respect, people that they trust. They know their product really well. And I think an event planner should be a CPCE. Yes. And, and so ask an event planner, what is your catering background as it pertains to event planning? You know, what do you know about decor? What do you know about production? What do you know about production schedules? Those are all really good questions if you're going to go after and hire a wedding planner. Great advice, Lisa. Great advice. What about the preferred vent? So talk, let's talk a little bit about the preferred vendor list at hotels. Okay. <laughs> One of my How? favorite topics. I know. So tell yeah. us a little bit about your preferred. I hear you have a very, you know, you, no fees involved. Tell me about mm-hmm. your preferred vendor list at your hotel. Well, our vendor list, which we call our uh Event professional specialists, I think. We have a different name for it. We try to avoid the word vendor. Yes. Even though, you know, business internally, partner, we, business I th- partner. I think a business partner is really yeah. cool. I always try to use business partner when I talk to people. Mm-hmm. Business part- Cause because they are. truly are. Yeah. And those are people that we have relationships with. No one can pay to be on our vendor list. And our, and our list is a list of people who have done events in the hotel, first of all. So we, we know that they've been on site and they've performed for our customers They've done an exceptional job. They've been recommended by our brides and grooms back to us. So I always say the benchmark really is about we want people to partner with in business who are as good as or better than us. Nice. That's kind of where the bar is placed for them. And we update that list regularly, meaning we put people on the list and we take people off the list. If, if people are not, if we're not getting good reviews from our customers and we ask for that actively, then we take them off the list because we're not comfortable anymore recommending them. And if a bride finds a vendor that truly is a rock star on their own, Mm -hmm. 
you'll allow. Oh, absolutely. I mean, venues. I should let's let's change. Venues should allow that particular vendor into their property yes. so long as they have their license. Mm-hmm. And obviously, insurance is huge. Yes. You know, liability insurance is is really really big mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And, and the, then that vendor. They may not be on our list, but that's okay. They also need to understand that they need to follow the, what we call the house rules about when they arrive, what entrances they use, what exits they use. Their staff should be uniformed. Their staff shouldn't be in our public restrooms. You know, all of these things. So there's there's all of these rules that kind of go along with being in our house. And it's really for everybody's protection and to keep the venue in tip top shape. Absolutely. No. And, and it's different in different cities. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you, you mentioned when they, you know, you have a, a, a restroom for vendors. Mm-hmm. What's the, what's the situation with the meal thing? Do you feed? Here's a good <laughs> question. This, this is, is a, a hot question. topic. Mm-hmm. Do you feed a bride? I have a bride. We have brides listening right now. Should mm-hmm. they feed their vet? Now don't think about you at the Houstonian. Just think in general. Mm-hmm. Do, do they feed the vendors or not? We do what's a vendor break room where vendors can go when they're taking a break. On the same so, floor as where the wedding is? or like- uh, Sometimes it's on the same floor, but sometimes it's on a different floor. Really? Based on how our, well, based on how our space is laid out, it could be in a different room on the same floor and not be seen by the guests. So it should be kind of off the beaten path in that respect. But you need a place for people to go when they're taking a break because your band has to take a break, by the way. Your DJ has to take a break. Maybe not so much. Maybe not so much. Yeah, no. but you know the but standard. I like the is, fact that you're thinking that yeah, way. I really the standard do. Standard is 45 minutes on, 15 minutes off for a band. Bands definitely a because band because it's a very physically active thing. DJs might be different. Yeah, DJs were a little different. Even when it comes to the vendor meal situation, mm-hmm. I mean, I really don't require. You know, as a DJ entertainer, I tell my staff, listen, I, I know technically we're with a client for maybe four hours of DJing mm-hmm. their reception, and maybe in Texas it could be a little bit different, like the hours. And I'll mm-hmm. talk to you about that in a minute but if we're DJing someone's wedding for four hours it's probably going to be for us a six to seven hour day right and I usually tell my 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 staff I mean I can only speak for my people is listen you know grab a little something to eat our job for those four hours is just to keep an eye on the room keep Mm -hmm. the keep the flow going get people partying if we get fed it's really nice but it's not necessary for somebody like us right for a photographer Absolutely. Because think about it, right, Lisa? These photographers Mm -hmm. are with them. Eight hours of shooting is a 12-hour day for a photographer or videographer. Mm -hmm. So those are the people that I would really probably want to make sure get fed. Your photographer, your videographer, and you mentioned like a room for the band Mm -hmm. because I've seen that lots and lots of times. And we kind of call it our vendor break room. I like that. And we have a community one, actually. So we um, have a meal that the customer will provide for their vendors. And then we, we have one menu, everybody goes to that room. And, and so we might have two or three weddings going on in our facility, which is not at all uncommon. So Mm -hmm. all the band members, all the DJs, all the photographers, videographers, everybody kind of congregates in that one space. Cool. And I think it's a nice thing to provide. It is. They need a break area. You don't want them hanging out in the room. Right. You know? And why is that? Why not? Why not have? I used to work with a wedding planner, and she used to actually have us eat in the room with the with the clients. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, times have changed, Lisa. Yeah, times yeah. have changed. But is there any reason why they should like why do we get separated from the client? It's just, just so just, they can kind of relax. Okay. And like you know, loosen their tie. I think. Yeah. I I don't know if I was a band member performing. I don't know that I'd be comfortable sitting in the room. I wouldn't taking a break. I think I'd want to get somewhere and kind of you know, kick my heels up and put my, you know, lean Ab- back and relax a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of off stage, on stage. So here's yeah. a question. Why, why, I'm going to change it. Why is the gratuity always built into the price for food? Why, why, did, why, did, why, did, why and only is it only in the catering industry that we see gratuities built oh, into? Oh, added on. Yeah, mean? added on to, oh. a, a, onto their, onto their, you know, bill yeah. with, you know, cause we don't do that in the DJ world and I don't think photographers do that in the photography world, mm-hmm. but I know there's a really, really good answer as to why well, we do that. Well, probably because you want the customer to be aware that that is the service charge amount that's being considered your, you know, you'll hear different terms. It, most hotels charge what it's called a service charge. The gratuity, an actual gratuity is something that would be, um, it's assumed that all of that gets paid out to the wait staff. 
But a service charge is a little different. A portion of that usually is paid out. And some of it is retained by the facility so for the a hotel So the service charge and gratuity. So a little different. So service charge again is? It, it implies that the hotel, is, uh, the hotel or the venue is keeping part of it. Okay. Um, and, a, and a gratuity would be implied that all of it is being paid out to the wait staff. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got perfect. Thank you. See, thank you yeah. for clearing that. And I think it's important. I mean, those, you know, those people, the banquet, ca- you know, the banquet captain and the servers, they are the hardest working people at a wedding. Yes, I they have are. to tell you, I mean, they are o- always so accommodating. Mm-hmm. You never, you know, they sh- and they should be. Yes. You never see them. No, we can't do that. You know, I'll be right back. Let me see what we can do. Don't worry about it. You know, they mm-hmm. are, they are the hardest. They are the unsung heroes I yeah. feel at um, a wedding reception and even at an event and and at NACE when we have the opportunity to you know stand up and applaud when we're at a host hotel for a conference it brings almost mm-hmm. tears to my mm-hmm. eyes because Me too. they're so you know they don't expect it and they're like oh we really are appreciated yeah. and they're it's really uh, you know I don't I think for a lot of hotels the banquet staff is probably the most tenured staff in a building mm-hmm. I know for ours it is not uncommon to have 15, 20, 25 year employees. And that is their craft. That is something they're very proud of. And they are the hardest working people. They're really the heart and soul of what your customer is going to experience. And that's a, probably a good question for a bride to ask mm-hmm. is what kind of reviews do you get on your service? Very good. Very good. And not question. just about the catering manager service, it's about the captain and the servers. Mm-hmm. How do people feel? And I know it's not an all, it, at all uncommon for me when I get a letter about somebody's great wedding. It always includes our staff. That's so sweet. It's, That's really it's, nice. it's really never just one person. It it takes a team of people to, it, to take it home and, it, and make it special. It does. No prima donnas allowed. Mm-hmm. Everybody from your photographer, your videographer, your entertainment, mm-hmm. your servers, we're, we're all on the same team that mm-hmm. day. And yes. that is very, very, very important for brides to understand mm-hmm. that when you're putting together your dream team, yeah. you know, that you make sure that everybody, you know, they all get along and, mm-hmm. and they and know we'll, each other. They've worked together before. Absolutely. That's also the beauty of our vendor list is a lot of these people from you know the entertainer and the videographer and the photographer in particular, they've all worked together before. Nice. So they all know each other and they know that they have to work together. They're, they're not afraid to talk to each other about maybe a difficult situation that might be happening. They're very open and honest and transparent with each other. And that's that's the beauty of working with the people that your hotel recommends. Mm-hmm. So here's a funny question for you. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Okay. What happens to all that food at the end of the night where <laughs> that doesn't get eaten? Or what happens to all that food, Lisa? Okay. Good question. <laughs> and, you know, some people always want to, they, they say, well, can I take it with me? So this is this is kind of how it is. When you make arrangements to have a wedding reception, a served meal, a banquet meal, a reception station oriented menu, whatever that is, you're paying per person. You're not paying per pound or per dozen. You're paying per person. And you're paying that venue to serve those people on site. Okay. So the hotel determines how much food they need to make to make sure that they're more than accommodated. So for, for instance, on a buffet, you, you can't plan just enough because at some point in time that buffet would be empty and that would never be a look that you would want to have out there. So you have to constantly be putting new fresh food out there. So the venue is controlling all of that and you're paying per person. You're not paying for the food that they have to put out there. You're paying per person based on the number of guests that you have. Got it. So where does that food go? A lot of it has to be thrown away. Yeah, because for health reasons, right. you can't donate yeah. to a food bank or I, I, nothing like that. I mean, because it's... Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, cake is a little different story because a lot of people like to take that home and they'll pick it up the next day and that's fine because cake is kind of made to do that. Are you still seeing those people that wrap the tops of the cake and put oh, it in sure. the freezer and try to eat it a year later? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We still have people save the anniversary tier. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Inter- mm-hmm. I wonder how good that tastes. I don't know. <laughs> a year later. I bet you that $10,000 cake is probably about seven grand when you freeze <laughs> right, it. Right. After, <laughs> after one year in the freezer. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, because that's. I always, you know, I always 
always at the end of the night hear people say, "Could I get a doggy bag?" And, and no, no. They, they, the cake, yes, but the food, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Um, what about cleaning? Once the event's over, is there a cleaning fee that 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 the hotels charge? Are you aware of any sort of cleaning fees? I'm not aware of any out there for hotels. If you are if you are doing your reception in a venue where you're bringing in the caterer, there may be some associated costs with that. But usually in a venue that's doing their own catering, so when you pick the venue, you're picking the caterer all at the same time because that caterer is exclusive to that venue Mm -hmm. in a hotel setting or a club setting or a restaurant setting. There shouldn't be any cleaning fees unless you do something crazy like, you know, minute atom-like size confetti all over the place. There might be some cost for that. Right, okay. But there shouldn't be. Right. In a venue where you're buying the catering. Yeah, I can't imagine anything unless somebody was doing some sort of painting. You right. Know, live painting. Right. But Something you, but crazy. You, but you would let your venue know that ahead of time mm-hmm. and that would be discussed. Yes. So yeah. No, that's that's yeah, that's a that's a good question. Mm-hmm. What are what's a hot theme that you're seeing right now? Is there anything 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 hot a hot theme? You know, I see a lot of people bringing in um video. And pictures as part of their decor. It's fascinating to me. Meaning? Meaning they, they are showing, um, you know, pictures and, and videos of the couple. Um, through the years? Through or? the years. They may be, you know, as I saw somebody who did this whole storyline and it was part of their decor where they were showing home movies of, the, of each side growing up and pictures and mixed into that. So there's a lot of a lot of people are going back to traditional feelings about family nice. in a very untraditional way, which I think is very sweet. It's really about family and friends and opening it up to that, showing fun pictures of friends and family growing up. And how long should a wedding reception be? When you book normal, a normal, I think the normal life is about four and a half to five hours. I think it'd be hard to ask people to stay longer than that. You know, your cocktail hour and then your dinner is probably about an hour and a half. So that's two and a half hours and then two and a half to three hours of dancing. Dancing. And all of those fun things that go for the after after the meal. Are you seeing a lot of LED up lighting lately? Mm-hmm. I love the new lighting trends in weddings. and, and those... Because lighting makes the decor just pop makes the color really happen. It makes food look better. It makes the room look better. You really feel like you're entering a place that has got some real um, theatrical feel to it, like a different place. It It really accents whatever you're doing. You know, your tabletop could be spectacular, but if you don't have it lit, no one will see it. Yeah, yeah. So you got to think about lighting and you got to make that investment. Do you see a lot of, is it mostly lighting? Co- like, would, would your hotel do the lighting or do you bring somebody we in? We bring somebody do- in. Yeah. Okay. And usually the decorator will either subcontract the lighting or the lighting people work hand in hand with the decorator. Great. Yeah. But that, you know, when you're talking about a planner, the planner really has to kind of put those two things together. And good lighting companies can work with any decorator. Again, you're looking for people who have relationships who know how to work together really well. Sure. And, and, Obviously, they, 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 you know, they, they, do they get into your room ahead of, ahead of time? Mm-hmm. I mean, not like, not the two hours. I mean, in some situations, is it okay for people to set up maybe a night before if they have, if it's, if it's a really if big wedding? A, yeah, sure. If the space is available, yeah. Um, and with lighting, it's kind of interesting too, because that is hung from, usually hung from the ceiling. Yes. So you can do that. You could even do that the night before and have an event going on that's totally different. Monograms are huge now. I'm really yes. seeing a surge in the monogram on the dance floor. Yes, it looks I love so it. nice. Me too. It's, it's one of my stunning. favorites. It really does mm-hmm. does make the room look fantastic. Yeah. And I've seen people take um, that still that gobo effect and do it on the walls to really give a yes. room a really rich texture. Yeah. Yeah. Like a wash. It's, I, yes. Yeah. It's like amazing. a wash effect with, mm-hmm. with a pattern or something like that. That's, yes. And that's great. And this is a catering person. This is Lisa mm-hmm. who has been, you know, celebrating 15 years. So, so you've really seen a lot of things. Yes. We, you know, 15 years ago, we did not see much lighting. No. And, you know, it makes all the difference in the world. I think it is one of the most overlooked parts of decor that is really now coming into mainstream. And I think another thing that's overlooked these days, since we're talking about receptions, um, I'm not seeing too many people having their weddings videotaped like they used to have. 
oh, at least really? in, in yeah. this area of, of the, not even this area. I've talked to friends from all around the country. Are you seeing videographers still at your weddings in, in we, Texas? Yeah, we are. And it's interesting, though, because I don't think they're doing as much footage as before. I'm seeing videographers do a lot of pre-wedding stuff. Mm, nice. Like the bride's getting ready, with, and she's interacting with her bridesmaids, and they're having fun, and they're having a little champagne in the dressing room. I mean, everybody's clothed, don't get me wrong. But, right. you know, it's about, you know, the bride looking at her dress, and her dress is hanging. Nice. And, it's a lot of pre stuff. I've even seen videos where there's interviews in advance. Like, you know, the bride will be talking about her day and maybe the father of the bride will be talking about giving his little girl away and all of those things. So the video really tells a story, but there's not a lot of footage of the wedding, which is really interesting because when videography first came into the mainstream of wedding planning, mm -hmm. it used to be just taping the ceremony from start to finish taping most of the reception, get, you know, catching the highlights. And then it really became a lot about the reception, sure, less about the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And now it's becoming this whole story about, you know, how do people feel before? And now we catch snippets of the ceremony and now we're catching people. It's cinematography fun. now. You're, it's you're a an short engaged story. girl. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a documentary. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And it's an, it's an heirloom. And it's, mm -hmm. it's sad that so many of our couples um, are not booking as much video as they should mm -hmm. be. And, and I hope that there's a, a young lady or a young man who's listening to this podcast now who really reconsiders or considers having a videographer at their wedding because it really mm -hmm. is a family heirloom. And, and now you know you and I both being in the wedding industry you 15 years me I guess 15 years since uh -huh. the 90s you know these there these people that were married back then their kids are growing up and they're yes. seeing their videos yes. you know now we're getting into the part where their children are seeing it yeah. so well, let me tell you a funny story about yeah. video because my older sister got married in 1985 oh okay I mean video videographers as you know it were not part of wedding planning in 1985 but so my younger sister's boyfriend had a video camera and he propped it in the back of the church and like shot this shot the ceremony. I mean, just terrible. I mean, terrible. And it kept <laughs> focusing on my sister too, which was even funnier. But long story short, it's it's a precious thing. I mean, my uh, nieces and nephews, my sister's children, love watching that video. It's it's a hor and it's not even a good video, but yeah, it is. It's an heirloom. It's an heirloom. People will watch it every year, you know, and and they're really. They're quite dramatic nowadays. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is a credit to the art and craft of videography, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I am so happy that you were here with us to talk Thanks. about weddings and wedding receptions. We talked vendors. We talked about NACE. Any, anything um, to uh, you know promote in regards to NACE? Do we have anything coming up? Is there a membership drive that we uh, that's going on right now? We do member promotions every month now, and it's really geared towards thanking the, the members that are already on our, you know, that are already active members, um, doing incentives for them to renew, getting new members. But really the heart and soul, I think, of our organization as it pertains to the consumer is that our people are very, very committed to their trade. They are in it for the long haul. They are serious about their career. They're serious about advancing the industry. And they're very serious about making customers happy. Absolutely. I mean, our greatest joy, and I'm sure yours is too, Jody is making customers happy. I mean, when I get the letter and someone says, my wedding was perfect, I'm like, cha-ching, home run, <laughs> shazam. That's what it's all about. And especially when you get it on the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. And when they're talking about the catering manager and they're talking about that's the nice. staff, that's great. And then when they go as far as to say, and the people who you recommended who did the other things in our party were fantastic, I'm like, that's it. We have hit the gold mine. We've hit the jackpot. And how does one find a NACE member right now to, to work with? How would they know somebody is a NACE member? Could they go mm -hmm. on the website? Yeah, you can go to nace.net. You can look at our member directory. It's, it's listed by different, you know, florists, videographers, photographers, entertainment people. 
So they, yeah, you can find can, those people. They can even probably Google it. You know, Google their city if mm-hmm. they're in Houston. Absolutely. Nace, Houston, Nace, Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And how does one get a hold of you, Lisa? If somebody wants to drop you an email mm-hmm. or send you out a tweet or something? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm on Twitter. I'm uh, L Hopkins CPCE. Mm-hmm. That's my Twitter handle, uh-huh. I guess. I'm on Facebook, too. Um, and then I, if I'm on the NACE website, which is NACE.net. Just look up the board of directors and all my contact information is there as well. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank once again Lisa coming in all the way from Houston, Texas to World Headquarters here at Sight & Sound in Las Vegas. Again, thank you so much. If you want to follow Weddings Done Right Radio, the how-to for the I Do Definitely, definitely subscribe. We're on iTunes now. I'm so excited. iTunes, yeah. So you can download podcasts, listen. If you want to get a hold of me, I am Jody Harris. You can find me on Twitter, Jody Harris, J O D I H A R R I S. We will be back with more, another fun episode of Weddings Done Right Radio, the how to for the I do. Talk to you guys real soon. Make it fantastic. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) 